in this here make me tough to you snack cake to me yeah more house more house this been overdue forever forever ask me when it was dropping said never never should have made you cut the feather but i designed it freemason margella what's good he shall try here the most woke no joking on <laughs> Back at again with a brand new video, and I don't have time for a biscuit today, man. I have no time for all that, because I want to get right down to business and let you guys know this game coming up Sunday in Detroit is extremely important. I don't even really want to get into the, the Lions too much right now just yet, because I want to mention, I want to talk about this that Steelers game again. First, let's all touch on it. I just want to touch on this a little bit. That game was embarrassing. A lot of people around the NFL were finally getting us some respect. They were finally noticing and actually acknowledging the Panthers for the first time in what seems like years. Even though we went 11-5 last year, people weren't really acknowledging us and really giving us any kind of respect. They haven't really looked at us in any kind of real way since we went at 15-1. and And even in 2015, we weren't really given any kind of real respect until we were already 12-0 or like 13-0. So it was kind of a weird mixture of, you know, people acknowledging us but not really wanting to, but they were kind of forced to acknowledge us because we were we were still undefeated like through the late parts of the season. So like, I mean, I guess we have to give them some kind of credit. I guess at some point we have to. But right now, we're in a situation where this game isn't about lines at all, honestly. The lines are three and six. They're on a three-game losing streak. I mean, the way they look at this, look at, look at the way the season started off. The first week of the season, they get blown out by the Jets, 48-17. Second week, they lose to the Niners. Now, the Jets and the Niners. There's probably, what, six wins? Maybe, or is it five wins between those two teams? Honestly, if it's five or six, it doesn't matter. Those teams are not very good. The Lions start off the season really bad. They beat the Patriots because you know how the coaching staff works there. Matt Patricia knows their, their, their offense. He had a pretty good line in on what the Patriots like to do, and like he, he was an inside source on what they like to do on offense and whatnot. So that was kind of a trap game for the Patriots because Matt Patricia knows them just a little bit too well. And come on now, we all know what happened there. Then they go ahead and they lose to the Cowboys. They beat the Packers somehow early in October. I think Aaron Rodgers was still hurt. And they beat the Dolphins, who are kind of a weird team right now. They look good, and sometimes they look kind of bad, but they're still over 500, aren't they? I think the Dolphins are still over 500, or are they actually 500 right now? I think they're 5-4. and four. But it's a hard. It's kind of hard for me to actually say, are the Dolphins bad? Are they decent? It's a, it's a weird thing. I think they're just decent right now. They have Brock Osweiler as a quarterback. It doesn't really matter. They lost to the Seahawks. They lost to the Vikings. They lost to the Bears. And I just want to frame this properly for you guys so you know how the Lions looking at this game for us. Look, they're on a three-game losing streak. A month ago, they already beat a division opponent. And in the last two weeks, they lost to two division opponents with the uh, Vikings and the Bears. They have us coming to them on Sunday. And then they have a short week. They have to play the Bears again on Thursday on, uh, I think that's Thanksgiving, right? The 22nd. And that game's at 12.30. It's not even a night game. So you know how you have the, the short week? You might have a game at 1 p.m. But then the short week is you have four days. But at least the game's at night. They have a game at 1 p.m. on Sunday. And then it's again at 1 p.m. on Thursday. You don't even get that extra seven hours to rest up. You have to wake up, basically get ready for football, like at 6 a.m. So it's not really the same kind of short week. It's, like, it's actually a much bigger disadvantage of a short week. And they just got beat by 12 against a pretty good Bears team. And they do not want to go on a six-game losing streak because the game after that Bears game on a short week, they have to play the Rams. So this game right here, they probably understand they're probably going to lose to the Bears. And they're definitely losing to the Rams. That's not even... Well, we do have to talk about that at all. So they really are looking at this game right here as being the game they really, really, really need to win. This is a must win for them. I'm not making the playoffs. But unless they're tanking this season, this is a must win for them to get any kind of morale going toward the rest of the end of the season because they're not winning against the Rams. But the Bears are actually a really good team. They get their defense set and Mitch is on. And Mitch has been playing pretty good this season. I mean, he's not that bad. I know I'm going to a little bit more detail than I usually do talking about what our opponent has gone through earlier in the season we're looking forward to later on in the season. But I really thought it was important for me to frame just how important this game is for the Lions. We know how important this game is for us. Look, we're 6-3. and three. We need to keep up with the Saints. We need the Saints to lose a game for the one time. We need the Rams to lose a game. Honestly, they have the Chiefs coming up soon. But we need the Saints to lose a game. But we have to win out for us to probably maybe try to get that number one seed or at least take the division from the Saints. And this game is less about the Lions than it is about us getting back to what we usually do and how we usually play our games. And we have to be serious. We need to play this game angry 
and play this game serious because the Lions should not even be on the same field as us. Now before I get to the actual matchup specifics here, there's just one more thing I feel like I should mention here. I looked up something kind of important about this game. I looked at what the weather's gonna be like in Charlotte on Sunday. It's gonna be 60 degrees in Charlotte on Sunday. But then I saw what the weather's gonna be like in Detroit on Sunday. The high is gonna be 35. The high is 35 in Detroit, and it gets windy there. And if you don't think that weather plays a big role, especially for teams that play in warm weather states going into cold weather states in the middle of November, I'm sorry, I, look, it's going to play a role on 100%. In this game, we have to attack fast, early, and often because we have to get these guys demoralized early on in the game. It's going to be freezing. I don't know where else to tell you. We just had one game that was really cold in, in the Pittsburgh at prime time, and this ain't going to be no different, bro. We have to get these guys demoralized early on because we do not want one of those patented Lions comebacks. We know what Matt Stafford likes to do. He likes to come back late in games. Even if he's down two scores, he will come back on you. Maybe not so much this year, but Matt Stafford has that comeback gene. He has that clutch gene in him. He likes to start games. He likes to lose games early on, but he does have that gene. That, that something just clicks in his head when he's down 10. When he's down 12, he said, you know what? Let me just start playing for real. So in the cold weather games, you really, really want to establish a run game. And I think that this is going to be a really big chance for Chris McCaffrey to establish himself. He's actually a running running back who can also catch on the backfield. It's not like he's just leaning more on one side than the other. This is a game where he can really take the whole game over himself, which, I mean, he did in, the, in Pittsburgh, but, I mean, it wasn't enough. He, did, he was the only one who showed up. But I think this game here, cold weather, we're going to have to run a lot of trick plays here. We're going to do the same thing, let Cam do Cam. And the passing game is going to be important here because it's something I noticed, and this is kind of getting off track here a little bit, but in Week 9, Darius Slay had limited practice, and I think he actually played in that game. But in Week 10, Darius Slay did not practice at all that whole week, and he did not get into the game at all. And if Darius Big Play Slay is not over the top for these guys in Detroit, if Darius Slay is not playing this week against us, I better see 300 yards in a cam. I'm sorry, bro. Like, let me know who else is in the secondary in Detroit if his name ain't Darius Slay. I'll wait. Time's up. Pencil's down. Because I really think this should be the sweetest, and I mean the most delicioso secondary we're going to face this season. And I mean delicioso Bertolis. This uh, video is brought to you by Bertolis, by the way. But I need to see us either get Chris McCaffrey 150, 175 yards on the ground, or I need Cam to hit us up with 300 yards through the air because if Darius Slay is not in this game, the air is open. I'm going to start calling him FedEx Newton because that air mail should be coming in. We have too many weapons. Curtis Samuel, DJ Moore, Torrey Smith, uh, okay, one more down. We have Devin Funches. I did not, why did I do, why did I do Torrey Smith that dirty? I hope he's healthy, I hope he's good. If he can play, I hope you're ready to play, bro. I had not mean to do you dirty like that. But we have so many weapons on our offense that it is ridiculous. We should be able to beat these guys by a valiant. I don't, I don't want to, I don't care about a blowout. I want to see our O-line go back to how we were playing for eight games straight, not allowing that much of a pass rush. I think the Steelers has have a really, really strong and formidable pass rush. They were bringing a lot of exotic blitzes. They were bringing pressure from all different angles. They had guys switching sides on us, so our assignments were getting kind of out of whack a little bit. I do not expect our O-line to play as poorly this week as they did on a short week in Pittsburgh. I'm cool with that. Now to the defense. Do not let this man, Matt Stafford, cut you up. This man, Matt Stafford, has what, 16 touchdowns, eight interceptions? I don't want to hear it. Look at these stats, man. They're 23rd in yards per game. They're 19th in pass yards, 23rd in rush yards at just over 100 rush yards a game, 101.1. I do not need to see these guys who are well under, and I mean well under league average, doing anything to our defense. We have way too much talent. If I told you, and I think we can all agree with this, before the season, our D-line would consist of Julius Peppers, Mario Addison, 2K Short, Donatari Poe, which I'm now on with your guys, man. I, I thought Donatari Poe was like eating up blocks for K1 Short and that the inside was just getting like a little bit out of whack a little bit. I don't know where either one of them are. A lot of y'all talking about how Donatari Poe has been a disappointment, but I'm going to keep it real with you. I haven't seen too much from K1 either, and I really need to see some for both of them. I'm starting to think that Star Latulale was actually the glue for this D-line. 
I mean, Mario Addison is doing his job. Mario's doing his, he's doing his thing. Big respect to Mario Addison. He's going to end up with like, what? Probably 18 sacks this season. He could touch 20. Mario Addison could touch 20 this season if he really, 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 really wanted to. But I need to see anything, and I mean anything from our interior line. Eric Washington, please. Miscommunication. That, you, you must have Boost Mo Waddle to tell you. And that's no shot of you guys who have Boost Mobile out there. Look, man, get it how you live. Our secondary really isn't the problem. We need to stop the run. We need to get pass rush. We really need to get... Let's stop the run isn't the issue here. We need a pass rush. It all just comes down to just how serious are our playoff hopes this year. Are we trying to win the division? Or are we just trying to get into the sixth seed and get the playoffs? I want to win this division. And I think we can. And I think we have to make a statement in this game against a bad Lions team. And show, look, we got blown out last week. But we're going to come around and do what we do and make sure we get the respect back that this team actually deserves. That's just me. I don't know what y'all think about this game. What are your stat predictions? What are your score predictions? I think this game gets won by at least two touchdowns. I'm thinking maybe 14 to 30. We should win this game by at least 10 points. But I think that 14 to 30 is 100% doable here. This has to be a statement game. Uh, it doesn't matter if the league respects us or not, honestly. But... We all want that respect back. We want to win this game and say, look, we are a serious team. We know we got beat by a bunch. <laughs> we got beat by a bunch. <laughs> and it really should have been by a lot more. That that last touchdown by Christian was really garbage time, and no one even celebrated after that one. Kyle Love wasn't even awake for it. And my man Kyle Love was on the bench so asleep. My man Kyle had to celebrate that touchdown when they were watching the film on Monday. They're like, He's like, oh, you scored? Christian, oh, I ain't even, look, I ain't even know. But in all seriousness, man, we got to win this game, and we got to get on the right track going into the future for this season because we want to go ahead and lock this thing up. So like I said, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below, and you already know what to do with that like button. Cheers to you, appreciate the chance. Being told y'all I been the man. Being told y'all I had the gift. Tell a friend, tell a friend. Real ones gonna recommend. Count this as another win.